Ladies and gentlemen in this Red Gamer Tidicom video, let's discuss the performance of the Kronos Group's Vulcan API. There have been staggering numbers released recently which shows an almost 90% performance increase over OpenGL and Intel's Stardust 1.1 benchmark. We will go into just what uh, the Vulcan API is in just a second, but we will be doing an in-depth analysis on the recently released information. This information, however, there's an awful lot of it, let's just go with that, and I don't want to half-ass it, and because there are so many games released over the next week or two, plus on top of that we've been sent some hardware, we've got an SSD, we've got some DDR4 memory, we're going to be building a whole new system here at RGT, plus a few other bits and bobs. I don't want to just go into this and kind of do a half ass job. So some of the stuff we have discussed already, like uh, AMD's involvement in the um, API, so you can go ahead and check those interviews out simply by going to redgamingset.com and searching Vulcan when we have already had some exclusive interviews with AMD or you can search for it on the channel. But for now I'm just going to shut up and actually get on with the discussion regarding the Vulcan API itself. So as I mentioned there's a 90% increase in frame rate over the OpenGL standard. As many of you know AMD kind of gave their DNA, their blood to Vulcan. Uh, Mantle at its heart is what powers Vulcan now. There are definitely some changes and um, as many of you know Mantle was created specifically for the GCN architecture which powers such graphics cards as the 7970, the R9 290 or the 390X or even the Furies. Uh, there are iterations of the GCN architecture but effectively that's what Mantle does. However while AMD are still pushing Mantle forward, despite the fact that there are some claims that it's dead and gone, and that's not the case. Uh, they are still evolving the Mantle API specifically for things such as, let's go with virtual reality just for the sake of argument, and that's even according to AMD in an interview that we had with them. But the actual graphic side of things is being expanded, they're opening it up to developers. And of course, many people jumped on Vulcan. It's not just AMD or a few other guys that have said, hey, you know what, this sounds like a great idea. It's got backings from pretty much everyone and their mother, including companies such as even Sony or even Apple. So it is platform agnostic, meaning it will work across a multiple different devices and multiple different operating systems. And even Google have said, hey guys, we actually like the sound of this and are going to be using it for the next generation Android games. But, as I mentioned earlier, there is a massive performance advantage with Stardust. Now, this is particularly interesting because it's a constrained TDP scenario. This means that there is a thermal power envelope for the CPU slash GPU. Um, in case you can hear a bit of noise in the background, Amato at the moment is helping me by recording um, uh, Dishonored because we're doing a graphics analysis so you know if you can hear some tapping apologies she's stabbing people in the eye but as i mentioned for cpu slash gpu combinations which have a very specific power em envelope this is particularly true for mobile devices or even things such as high spec laptops you don't want to just drain the battery dead so there is a basically a power envelope that you can use and that has to be um I guess you could say split between the CPU, the GPU and any other devices. So what the team managed to do with the Stardust benchmark compared to just standard OpenGL which has been around for some time now. In fact the OpenGL technology dates back quite some time and we have gone into the history of it before but it was originally mainly used for graphics workstations and OpenGL now isn't so much used as the standard, mostly DirectX 11 of course, which we've discussed DirectX, DirectX's history, excuse me, quite substantially before. Anyway, what they have done, Vulcan, the team, is they have made it where the GPU is considerably more autonomous than what it previously was, which means the CPU needs to do a lot less workload, which means, consequently, less power needs to be drawn from the CPU which means it can be given to the GPU which means naturally the GPU can work a lot harder and because a lot of games now are a lot more GPU bound than what they are CPU bound this is even more the case because of a lot of compute technologies one can imagine how this uh, starts to um, evolve as I hinted at earlier, it is based on Mantle, but has been re redesigned from the ground up. Basically, anything that was specific to the GCN architecture has been ripped out, 
because that would be unfair. They don't want to do that. They want it to be um, as, I guess you could say, vendor neutral as possible. And also, naturally, just like DirectX 12, it's becoming considerably lower level, multi-core friendly, because obviously that saves performance, it imp improves performance, and just makes things considerably better for the next generation. So with CPUs with a lot of threads, for example, eight or 12 threads, they can start to gobble up that performance and actually send that data to the GPU, just like, um, let's say, DirectX 12. With Vulkan, you're going to have at least one thread which is going to be acting as the submission or command queue thread. Um, it basically tells the GPU, uh, sorry, the CPU, how all the, the other threads should act. It basically says, hey, you know what? I'm going to be the master thread and I'm going to tell the other threads, okay, this is what I need you to start calculating to send to the GPU. This is what I need you to start calculating and send it to the GPU. And therefore, of course, you can have a lot, a lot more draw calls on screen. You can have a lot more objects on screen and you can start to flood the GPU with a lot more commands. This is very much in-depth like the DirectX 12. I have to say that from a personal point of view, I am rather interested in uh, Vulkan. And I like it more than DirectX 12 in some ways, simply because, once again, it works across multiple different platforms, multiple different devices, and has a very, very open code base, which is really good, because it means that developers can work together much more, it's a lot more open, and because, of course, so many different companies actually have a stake in this thing, it means the evolution can be a lot faster. And I like the sound of that, personally. And Another thought, another thought is because you've got companies such as Valve who naturally have somewhat of a stake in Linux because we all know about Steam OS, it could mean that Linux gaming gets a bit of a shot in the arm. And it's not that I hate Windows or any of that jazz, but I like the idea of saying, hey, you know what, if you want to run Linux, then that's all you. You know, it's down to you. You're not basically screwed and you have to use, you know, basically jump through hoops to be able to run a windows bait a windows based game or pray to the gods that eventually they do release a linux based port and to be fair some companies for example warner brothers are actually not so bad with linux um if one was to jump over to steam right now look at the steam os games you see there are quite a few particularly with um obviously small indie studios because believe it or not if you were to look at Humble Bundle, you'll notice that one of the highest paying segments of the market when it comes to Humble Bundle is actually those who are running open source operating systems. Or at least that's what I've noticed anyway, whether that's always true, I don't know. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going for now, but um, well, hopefully you'll stick around. But take care and have a great evening. Bye for now.